I was just thinking about how funny it would be if John Paul converted after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I think it'll take a lot. <laughs> <lie. laughs> you see his hands behind you, is actually like blessing you. <laughs> Should abortion be legal? This is your daily catch up. With a priest! Hey guys, if you're liking the Daily Catch-Up Podcast, do remember to drop us a sub and uh, like this video as well. So this subject, I remember having a conversation with my priest, the priest that married Pat and I, and we had a conversation about pro-life and pro-choice. I remember that conversation, he managed to shut me up quite a bit. Wow, that's so hard so, to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so I invited, uh, invited you here to join us. Welcome, Father Terrence. Yay. Welcome. Wait, so when you introduce yourself to people, hmm. you re- introduce as Father uh, of course, if it's a church, I think it'll be father. I mean, if they come to the church, um, yeah, it's still father. father. If he's like outside, um, like kopi tiam, kopi tiam, I would then I mean, I would just use my Terence. Oh, Terence. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. No, that's a good point. This thing. Thing. That's a good question. <laughs> it's like I have my content strategies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just thinking about how funny it would be if John Paul converted after this episode. <laughs> Wow, I think it'll take a lot. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it'll take a lot. You know the fear, right? You see his hands behind you, it's actually like blessing you. <laughs> <laughs> he for I've got many people praying uh, during this session. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys read the news the other day, uh, Texas, the, the most restrictive abortion law uh, is going to come into effect in Texas because the Supreme Court there did not block um, this particular law. Like, it's quite, it's quite shag. So like, okay, let me just read out like some of the terms, okay? it prohibits most abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. I think previously, they permit up to 22 or 24 weeks. So yeah, before the like third trimester. The term, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but now it's six weeks. Usually at the time when women don't necessarily know that they're pregnant. Or it's usually at the time when you go like, oh, she, I'm late. And then that's usually like the six-week point. What's worse is that um, the doctors, the staff, counsellors, anyone who helped the patient carry out the abortion, even an Uber driver who drove the person to the clinic can be sued by anyone as uh, as potential defendants as part of the law. Um, the plaintiffs do not have need to have a connection or do not have to like show injury. So like I was saying, like the, the Uber driver, for example. Wait, so if the Uber driver doesn't know that they are going, this person is going to get an abortion? Yeah. It doesn't matter, but you drove them there. Yeah. Uh, so but in a sense, that's why there's court. La, then, if, then you can reasonably show that you... Didn't, didn't know, know. Then, right. you know. Like. Oh, but so the point is that there's no connection. You don't, it doesn't mean to your daughter or your neighbor yeah. or your nephew or niece. It can, you, be you can just, I, I think, I know you go through gossip, right? I just yeah. report you. And what's worse is that as part of this law, right, there is nothing that uh, exempts cases of rape or like incest. So even, even after six weeks, if you were raped, and you're pregnant, you can't have an abortion in, in Texas. Right, if you want to know our views on incest, please watch the other video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't let it uh, as, as a priest, people always, so what, what do you think, right? Uh, mm. What does the church say? Mm. My normal answer would be, what do you think? Uh, why do you think that way? And then uh, then I share with you why why I think what I think. Lah. Yeah. So, Fair. You know, the, <laughs> I think, I, okay, I would, I would start off, you know, we are talking about a legal case, uh, a, a law, yeah. right, in the US. Do we want to talk about the legality of it or do we want to talk about the morality of it? The legality as it should the law be controlling such things, is it? Yeah. Okay, like, legality. <laughs> no, you're the, I had this conversation with him already. No, so the, I, I think the question <laughs> I have, like, especially from a religious standpoint, right, is that, like, how do religious leaders look at it in terms of a law? Because we can be pro-life, for example, but the law could still exist for certain exceptions, but you could still promote pro-life within a legal abortion state. Part of that, the, the debate in parliament was that religious views shouldn't influence mm. because yeah. we are multi, multicultural, multi-religious, and one religion shouldn't influence the policy for the whole country, right? And I think for us in the church, it is not about religion. I think for us, it's, it's more than just about a religious stand. So for me, you know, I feel tempted to just take out this woman caller. You invited me yeah. here as a priest, and so okay. No, like, because I, of the thumbnail. Huh? The thumbnail. <laughs> 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 yeah, just but you know, they say, oh, you make sure you you have to keep in line with the church's teachings, mm. right? Uh, and somebody ever said, you know, you shouldn't uh, bring your personal opinion. But I said, what if my personal opinion is the same as, as the, the church's church? opinion, mm. right? Which for me, the question comes in, 
does it have to be a religious issue? And I think it shouldn't be that anybody, uh, if you think through it. This, this conversation should not be religious. It should be not about what the, the church thinks, but yeah. more of this news, right? Questions about pro-life and pro-choice. Mm. And we hear his views. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so in my conversation with John that time, um, for, it was not, <laughs> so I, never, I never quoted no, any, much, any yeah. scripture, right? Yeah. You know, and it was a lot of experiences, a lot of uh, what is the principle behind it. And, and I think that's where, you know. It's just I moral think, dilemmas, actually, that yeah. conversation. Just a lot of moral dilemmas. So I would think given today's context, we are pro-choice. I am pro-choice. <laughs> I'm, I'm my choice. Uh. What your choice? <laughs> my the woman's body choice. You, you, only you can choose your, for yourself, what? But in general, general pro in for this conversation, pro-choice is a nicer way of saying pro-abortion. Oh. <laughs> no, but oh, don't you think it's yeah. very hard for a man to choose? Technically, you cannot. No, no, so for society, no, you oh, I believe. Yeah, you I stress, I stress. Pro-choice lah, pro-choice lah. Right. Because in, in many countries, like, abortion is illegal. Do you feel like it should be illegal? That actually is the question. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm legal, surprised legal, that it is legal well, here. Yeah. I was Wait, having a conversation legal, right? with Father Terence. Uh, almost, almost heated conversation. <laughs> is <laughs> it's the first time like you're meeting again after Yeah, 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 yes, it is. Oh, no, no but that's so It's not like we, are, we were trying to change each other's mind. Like, I was just trying to understand his point of view and he was trying to explain his point of view because I just keep asking. So I will, that's why I invited him to kind of share. 100% of the guests that we have so far is built up from a fight that you <laughs> Were y'all always pro-choice? Like, since y'all heard about this thing, y'all were always pro-choice? Or was there... Or was it like you had, you made a switch somewhere? I think I was pro-life when I was younger. What changed then? Why were you pro-life when you were like younger first? Um, I think because I was thought that way, and I don't know by who. I don't know whether it was from Sunday school or whether it was from parents or whatever. But like, I think I think one incident that I remember very clearly was watching the news about abortion laws somewhere like you know, on CNN on, when I was like six or seven. Always tends to be the age I go back to. Um, <laughs> a lot, a lot you, happened. Like, 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 right? crisis. <laughs> Basically, because it's like whether I moved when I was in Malaysia or whether I was in Singapore. Like, so it's like when I was in Malaysia, I remember seeing on the news and then I think you watch some, news. <laughs> <laughs> like my parents would watch the news. Like, oh, right. And then I think someone in my family mentioned like Ayo, you see this, like, they they legalizing abortion, like, very bad. And I think that's stuck on yeah. me, that, like, okay, we should protect life as it is. And I think as I grew up and starting to meet, like, become an adult and meeting people of different, like, like backgrounds and realize that they really can't support having a child, for example, or there are different circumstances, then I realized that it's, it's very, it's a lot more nuanced than I think it is. I think I am pro-life after a certain number of weeks. I think I'm pro-choice before a certain number of weeks. And I know like in the Catholic Church and the teachings is that when an embryo is formed, that's that's life, like, right? And I think for me, I have a bit of a deviation where I think it's okay. Um, and so that's... Yeah, but based on nothing, like, just heating. Mm. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Ben Shapiro actually has interestingly quite a in similar point. Right. So he talks about how he is pro-life because a lot, he said a lot of pro-lifers see it as like you are murdering the baby mm. because as an embryo, maybe it's a it's a life already. But then, so he talks about like at what point do you count it as a life, mm. right? So if is it when it has a heartbeat? Then there are people that use pacemakers, right? Then mm. are those people not human? No. Uh. So is it when they breathe? Then that's when they are born. Mm. So that's way later. So then, how do you define it? So it's either you define a specific one or you don't define at all. So I thought that was quite an interesting point he made. Right. But so Ben Shapiro's pro life lah. I think you bring up a very important definition. It's, is it a human person? And that's where they've always been trying to argue, mm. right? I think the church's stand is that basically do not kill and it is a life, right? right. Um, bringing in all the, the what if this uh, because of deformity, because of rape, because these are external circumstances. But I think the f first starting point is when does life begin? Is it a human person? Does it have human rights? Mm. Right? Or do, do the rights only happen after you give birth? Or yeah. So that's where a lot of the discussion comes in. Yeah. So like what you mentioned, right? If the church's stand is like no matter what, do not kill, right? And that it is alive regardless of how old it is already, mm. right? So when it comes to us talking about exceptions, right? 
then does the argument go to us weighing lives? So if I choose that, okay, this this child came from, it's an unwanted baby, mm. right? So I'm valuing my own life over the baby's life, which is why I feel like it's fine to take the baby's mm. life such that, such that I can live my life. Mm. So is it because of that that... So it, that's why a lot of the... When people want to approach it, it will be, what makes the difference uh, that you can't murder? Mm you know, where, I mean... But I can abort. Yeah, yeah, right? And so, and then that's what they're trying to say. Is it about consciousness? Is it about the ability, you know, that they can think, they can breathe? And when, and they, y'all have given some examples that there are also some hum, humans who are born already. <laughs> and, and, and this is where maybe the world has gone towards what we call utilitarianism. Mm-hmm. Your value is based on your ability. You know, and I mean, now we are celeb- uh, not celebrating, we are um, the Paralympics, you know, right? And we're talking about this, these are people, these are specially able people. Um, so the dignity, right? And, and if you're going to weigh people based on their function, right? Then that, that leads to a whole slippery slope. I mean, that was what uh, Hitler and all that was doing. We are the superior race. So jumping back to Denise's question of were we always pro-life and pro-choice, right? I felt like I, w- I always grew up with the belief that abortion is just not a great thing to do. And I feel like even today, it still is. Uh-huh. Right? No one goes out thinking like, I'm not going to use condom because just abort, ah, cheap. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, condoms are cheaper in that sense, of right? Course, of so course. I always grew up thinking that, okay, abortion is bad. So like if the church thinks that it's not good, I'm like, okay, we can run with that. Until then, we realize... Um, at the end of the day, if I don't want, then I, if one day I become a father, then I just choose not to. Lah. How can I make other people feel like you shouldn't about also? Especially if I'm not going to take care of that, that child for you. Yeah, you know what right. I'm saying? And that was kind of how I, I flipped in a sense. Yeah. Like not, not flip angry, like, but more of being pro choice in a sense. But, yeah. I have, no, I have, but as a I have father, no you, will, you will be raising the child also. What? So then you're helping. Uh. No, no, but I think as it's a when, father. Yeah. It's when it's other people. So like, when for example, oh, okay, as a if we look at we yeah. look at Republicans, they tend to be well-to-do white males, for example. Yeah. And so then when it comes to abortion cases, like quite a lot of the reasons why is because of economic reasons or financial reasons, circumstances, and they tend to be of slightly lower class. La. And so then when the upper class is making decisions for women of like slightly lesser yeah fortune, for example. It seems a little bit unfair in that sense. Because it, it kind of sets you back in your development years, you know, in, in, in your 18 to 25 age, where what you do at that time can perhaps exponentially grow what you will be in the future. Yeah. And that period, you kind of spend raising a child as opposed to doing that, like, you know. Then it, mm. it kind of gets into a spiral and then maybe you don't have time start to study and so you're less educated, your children become less educated, then you and then start having more children, your kids have more children, then you'll never ever break up to the debt where, like, you'll, you'll never ever make up savings because everyone's just keep spending money raising children at, at some point. Yeah, and it's just interestingly, linking that to the question about society, right, that John Paul mentioned, in, I think in the 1990s, it was in Freakonomics, the book, like, because when, when abortion was legal around the 1990s in New York, right, in the whole 1990s decade, when New York was so high with crime, right, crime fell about 45% after abortion was legal 20 years later. Damn. Oh. So, like, because kids of yeah. women who were not, like, well-to-do were resorting to crime mm. because right. their families were not well-to-do. So, 20 years later, when you look at the results, or 10 years later, when you look at the results, so, it, it impacted crime by 45%. Actually, something that John Paul and I were just talking about this morning was about how if I know that I'm going to give birth to this baby, right, into a life of suffering, right, and a life mm-hmm. that they, I feel like I cannot properly provide for the child or even myself, then is that a life worth living or not? Mm. What are your thoughts on that? Because mm. I have a friend, like the reason why we're talking about it is because I have a friend who was studying, right, she was in uni, and then she and her boyfriend accidentally kena lah. Then kena already, in the end she chose to keep it. But right, she got no money, she still need to go to school, the guy is don't know whether it will be in her life or not, right? In her life or not. End up, the parents, everybody else around her needs to be the ones to come and help the situation. Mm. Which to me is a very irresponsible thing to do. La. I mean, okay, the irresponsible thing was like having sex without. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So the question would be... <laughs> <laughs> so, She's safe first. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, what, where was the irresponsible? Are we, are we training a generation to say, 
I can just do and don't think about the consequence. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so now we are, we are giving this option. I mean, we talk about contraceptives, we, we talk about uh, abortion. It's an easy way out. There is an out. Right. Right? And the, now the question is, it's not just an out where it's not affecting a human life. Right. So we are looking, the thing is we are looking at very individual um, circumstances, right? Mm. You know, and... I mean, the, the question about, well, the criminals were not born, so less crime. But that was, that's a problem of society, inequality, mm. right? And it's not about the child being born. It's mm. that, why is there this inequality that leads to crime? Which means that the, the government, the society has failed to help these people, right? In, in their finances, in, yeah. Mm. So we are taking the easy way out. It's like, hey, okay lah, you know. <laughs> Interesting way to see it. Don't have... Uh, this this group of people don't have the right to have children. I mean, don't talk about many children. Just one child also shouldn't have. Mm. Do we want to go down that path where only certain people then right. you say they, only the university grads can have children. Ah. Right. Maybe the sports people can have children because we don't want to have you know, tendency there's a uh, possibility that you know this person might be Grow up lower India. IQ, you know, less less useful to society. What? Where do you stand in terms of um, people that got raped? To be honest, so like sixteen year old raped, mm. the trauma that they go through, and of course that's why you know the shame or the it's that reminder that you know that they're carrying it for nine months of yeah. the event, right? Um, I'm not going to discount what they're going through, but um, like I was sharing, you know, the the trauma of taking a life, right? And we, we, we know of the River Valley. I think you did a, a whole video on the River Valley case, right? You know, the... Thanks for watching. To, <laughs> I was going to say he did watch. <laughs> to, to, to take a person's life. As a priest, you know, I hear confessions. Uh, there are people who... Who struggle to forgive themselves. You ask, you know, whether a priest, is there anything a priest cannot forgive? A priest can forgive, but I think sometimes a lot of people cannot forgive themselves. So what would you... I mean, clearly we're not here to change anybody's mm. mind, right? We're just here to help understand how each other think, mm. right? What would you tell a 16-year-old girl that was raped and pregnant? Mm. What would you tell her? And she can't tell your father, I really want to abort. Mm. Because it's going to ruin my life. I have to stop school. I'm going to... No one's going to want me. The guy doesn't want to take responsibility. So in the church, of course, we say there's always the, the, the option for adoption. Mm. Right? You don't... If you really feel that you can't look after the child, I, there are many childless couples mm. who are waiting to adopt a child. For me, the thing is, do you really want to take a life? Mm. Are you re ready for the consequences that you took a life? It may not be the best circumstance, whether it's rape, whether it's, you know, unintended pregnancies. And in fact, if you look at the statistics, these cases are on the minority. Yeah. You know, very low. And most of it is uh, married, married women, um, yeah, and who, because of lifestyle, because of finances, because of whatever reasons, career, you know, make that choice. Mm. And I think as church or whether as society, the question is how do we support these mothers? Mm. You know, do we have shelters where they can see out the pregnancy, give them counselling, give them support? I mean, if finances are an issue, what can we do for them? Mm. I mean, we don't just say hey, it's wrong and your own tai chi, no. Right? But for us, is how can we then support them so that the in, in our view is that the wrong is not done? So in these kind of circumstances, right, the trauma, if you're talking about will it affect my life, will it affect my education? Then for us, it's okay. Maybe just take that one year break, right? Mm. Have the child, and we promise that you know the child will be brought up in a in a good family, or back, yeah, and that the child will be taken care of. I feel like the same can be said the other way around. Mm. So if I'm 16 years old, I'm a little girl, I cannot rape by some stranger, and I'm pregnant, right? Mm. I find out like a few weeks after, lah, right? Then. I go on with the pregnancy, even if at the end of the day it's immediately to be aborted, right? That that nine months of to be having, adopted. Uh, to be adopted, lah. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Adopted, right? Mm. Like that whole nine months and having to go through a full pregnancy and that being a constant reminder of the trauma that I went through, right? Mm. 
I don't know whether a 16 year old can handle something like that. Will you forget? Even if you're a bot, will you forget the rape? No lah, but I'm saying both both ways, right? I think the damage is almost the it could potentially be the same psychologically. So the the same, right? The but one you took raped. a life, one didn't take a life, yeah. one, right? So uh, the the question is, you were raped. Does it mean if you don't carry the child, you will forget the rape? No, you would still remember it. So for that nine months, child, so that's why we say for that nine months, how mm. do we support this person mm. through that? Right? It's not going to change the. It's not going to change the the fact that the rape happened. But now the question would be, if you're going to actively take this child's life, you kind of understood why that conversation is another trauma. Went it's another trauma that you are adding on. You know, not that if if I do this, then I I won't remember that I'm, I was raped. If that was the case, then maybe there was a there was something to think about. But it's not. Okay, uh, so vasectomize lah. Everybody, <laughs> vasectomize. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, one the, the one that I want to bring up was what's your view bit. on on. Uh, uh, I mean, so let's say you know deformity, Down syndrome. Mm. Uh, you know, yeah, no, actually, I was thinking about that. I wanted to ask you yeah. right. If you were you're pregnant and the doctor tell you there's a good chance your your child is Down syndrome, what will you do? I w- I would Nothing lean la. towards. Just yeah. Yeah, I would lean towards maybe aborting. Why? Eh? Cause I would be. I mean, it's not so much for me, but I would feel like the quality of life for my child would be severely diminished, lah. And like, would I want? I mean, okay, we can talk about does a child have the right to choose for himself or herself? But then it's like I, as a parent, like there's so many decisions that a child that a parent makes for a child, so what? So then, like, if I feel like the child of a li- the life of a child is going to be severely severely diminished because they have Down syndrome. Is it really for that though? No, but then so does the quality of the child's life met- depend hinge on the child's happiness or on how society perceives what a good quality of life is and then imposed onto that child. Yeah, but at the end of the day, that this child, good. it's a good question. But at <laughs> the end of the day, <laughs> the child would be subjected to societal norms anyway because it will be a child that exists in society. So, But that doesn't mean that they are not happy in like the lives that they lead, no, whether or not sheltered, right? Yeah, but then if society, but out, ma, if society is structured in a way yeah, where they, they have to get work, then work is should like normally for able-bodied people, then they will be of a different class of people anyway. What if you're gonna be frank about it? And so then, it, sorry, sorry to cut you off, no, no. but I feel like it falls back to the same argument as the one that we had just now about my child's gonna be a criminal when I grow up. Yeah. So in a similar sense, then should society not to work towards being more inclusive rather than me killing the child? In, in an ideal world, yeah. In an ideal, but we, we, we both know that's not happening. Right? Hey, this is supposed to be the Catholic table. Why have they flipped over and we become, <laughs> This has yeah, become the yeah. sinner's yeah. table. <laughs> Even John Paul. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Even, <laughs> <on> my hands. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, honestly speaking, two years ago, or maybe three, four years ago, if Pat got pregnant and we know that there's a problem in the child, I don't even know with certainty. I feel like if the doctor say one in five chance that your child will be deformed or Down syndrome, for example, I feel like I would abort. But then what changed is that then I realized that I'm already very lucky and very blessed that I have a lot. Oh, it wasn't our conversation. No, it's not. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed to have a lot. Like God has given me so much in life that I feel like if anybody in this world will be better supported to take care of a special mm. needs child mm. because they will come into the world anyways. Who's uh, going to raise them? Okay. Right? I feel like I have enough to raise them. Like, I'll have the support system to raise them. Make them look like this. <laughs> yeah, make me look like this. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> no, 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 no. I feel like you sufficiently can be to yourself very well because it's not for yourself. You're being selfless. For me, my the two, three year ago self will be nothing about it's for not your about, own community. Yeah, it was for me lah. Like, la. But no mate, you wouldn't lah. If you find if you're a dad or if you're a mum. Unlike the both of you, I'll consult my partner. I'm gonna give you a fight for <laughs> no, back to this law, right? Like <laughs> now now I'm really quite confused between pro-life and pro-choice because the pro-life law seems to push the pro-choices to basically make a smarter preemptive decision before they just that run around. ensure right? that there are stronger support systems for for example what he was talking about. Yeah. So instead of waiting until you have to like what you mentioned, right? Wait until you're pregnant and then you go and figure it out, right? Yeah. You just make a smarter decision earlier. No, I agree. I think of course there are anomalies that like we're, what we're no talking about where there's rape that and whatnot. We can la. disagree with that. Yeah. Right. It's and like we, we can we don't disagree. 
It's just that there are also people that choose either way I'm going to suffer a level of guilt. Mm. Whether I, it's an abortion guilt um, or as in either way I'm going to suffer in a manner. Whether it's abortion guilt or whether it's the I, rest of my life. Rest of, or, or the next <laughs> one, two years of my life, lah, right? But at least I I will decide my suffering lah, in that sense. If, if religion was not a matter. Right. Right. If my moral is like Right, then I choose my suffering long. I feel like that's that's the thing that you can't take away from people yeah. that are pro-choice. No, but it's it's really again, what do we understand about the value of life? What mm. we understand mm. when you talk about happiness, you know, I mean, I don't know how how often you interact with those with Down syndrome. Does it mean they are not happy? A lot of times we project our our idea of uh, what a good life is, you know, and. And then we, and we so. think that they, you know, they won't have a good life. Yeah. But, you know, for you, you're saying, I have the finances to support them. I have the support I, system to support yeah. them. But mm. I think my, the bigger question is, do you have the heart to support them? Oh. Do you have oh. enough heart? Oh. <laughs> this guy. Right? I think Are you really, insinuating <laughs> that I don't have <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm saying oh. Right? You know, ultimately, the question is, is maybe bringing the, the, the church point of view, God is asking you, do you have the, the love, right? And this is a, a, a time for you to exercise that love. Mm. Right? But again, how, you know, maybe in the future, we are able to test the baby more than just about deformities. We are able to test the baby about whether the baby can study. You know, a lot of non-physical deformities. Are we going to use that? They say, hey, this child... You uh, can already do that. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's just not a lot in Singapore. Yeah, so it, do we want to go down that path, right? Of again, what is ability? What is quality of life? Mm. What what the value of life? And this, I mean, the, the, the church would say, you know, what Pope John Paul II would classify as, <laughs> as the culture of death. Mm. And we are now in a society that doesn't place a value of life just because a person is alive, but based on all these other abilities, the utility, the function of a person, that this person has a better, greater value than another person. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, we are not like telling people to be pro-choice or pro-life. But I think the what our conversation has driven at mostly today is just know the consequences of whichever is the one that you take, right? Yeah, and I think like for most people who, I, I would assume if you're watching us, you would tend to maybe watch a bit more left-leaning media as well. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. a lot of the information that you get tends to be a lot more pro-choice. And we are pro-choice, I mean, besides father. Um, and so I think it's helpful to understand the arguments from the other side as well. Yeah, and if the media is covering this and they're trying to make you focus on this, think about what they're not talking about. <laughs> the news. Trying to distract, is it smoke screen? This is the smoke screen. Because the news is just trying to make the world's problems your problems. Yes. So people unsubscribe from this current affairs. <laughs> 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 hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you watch, remember to drop us a subscription and drop us a like as well. We'll see you next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.